Good morning, everyone. It is time for Daily Devotion. I hope everyone had a great Labor Day yesterday. I know I I got some work done, got some uh, hangout time with the family. It was a good day. Um, <clears throat> today, though, I want to finish uh, the P Prodigal Son. I've really enjoyed the last couple of, uh, the last three Daily Devotions where we kind of took the Prodigal Son apart and looked at each person in it. Today I want to look at, it, at look at it as a whole. So I am going to read the whole parable. It is Luke 15, 11 through 32. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided up the property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, he heard the music. So he called to one of his servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The other brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out to him and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. That you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we are had to celebrate to be and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. I love this parable. I, I'm guessing you figured that out by now if you've watched any of the other ones. And I think there's uh, just so much meat in it when we, especially when we start looking at each one of the, the people, the younger son, the father, and the older son. But I think it's when we look at it all together that we truly get the full impact of it. Because throughout this entire parable, there's places we connect with. All of us have been the younger son or have, well, we've all been the younger son and we've known people that we loved who were the younger son. We have both been given grace by the loving father and hopefully we have been a father who has celebrated the, the return of the loss. And we've all been that jealous older brother and then we've all been heard those words from our loving father that says we are gods. We hit every part of this text, but when it comes down to it, the part that I think just talks the most is when the father says he was dead and he's alive. And it's just so true. And it's so true for us all. We are all go through these parts of death. And then through Jesus Christ, we have all been given life again. 
We all have had people in our lives who have been dead, who have been brought back to life. And we see where the rejoicing comes. We see where the excitement comes, both as one celebrating and one who has been celebrated for. This is just a powerful statement of what forgiveness and grace looks like. And it's not just forgiveness and grace from the Lord to us. But because it's a parable that had, re that had people in it, it shows us what we're supposed to do for each other. Every one of what well, every one of us have had people who have left us and come back, or have had, um, uh, or who um, you know gets mad when we forgive others, and we are still called to forgive. Now, I will say something, and I, and I always want to make sure I say this when when I start talking about how we're for, supposed to forgive and forget, or forgive and um, give grace to others. Um, I have no doubt the father forgave his son and loved his son, but I'm guessing he didn't give him any more money. He welcomed into his house, but at the same time, didn't say go and keep doing this. When we forgive, we also should not and cannot continue um, uh, um, relationships that... Um, encourage abuse or or uh, neglect or taking advantage of we need to forgive but don't put ourselves back in that situation that is just going to keep happening over and over again but we are called to forgive and it's so hard but when we see it as a lot a dead and then alive it gets a little easier even that person who has hurt us, we know that they have been dead and then they want to be forgiven and we can see them as alive. Even if we never see them again, that takes off so much pain and suffering in us. When we have people who are around us who have stopped those horrible circles of, of abuse and all, then we can have relationships. Maybe not what they ever were before, but we have relationships and we have death become alive. This text speaks to me over and over again in a new and exciting ways every time I read it. I hope, uh, I hope we've, uh, I hope there's been something about it in the last four daily devotions that we've talked about it that has struck you because it is always going to speak to me. Let's pray. Holy Lord, I thank you that you have forgiven us that you have seen us as dead and then celebrated when we were alive again. Thank you that you have given us a beautiful example of what forgiveness and grace means. And thank you that you have allowed us to celebrate when others that we have loved have been dead and who have come alive again. Help us to walk that fine line of forgiveness and grace and yet not to continue abuse and neglect or to enable poor decisions but still to see people as alive after they've been dead in your holy name lord amen